Today's video is episode 15 of the chess.com rapid rating climb, but with a bit of a twist because I just got back from a football game because I like to play football at uni and I got a mad concussion from a collision with one of um, the opposing players, accidental on both of our parts. And I played on because I'm an absolute idiot and I'm absolutely mental. But I then got home and realized I hadn't recorded a video for today. And if you've been around the channel, you know that I upload every single day. So I'm like, oh, well, I can't not upload. So I, I, I also have a concussion. So my chest is going to be terrible. So why not make a video where I see if I can play um, semi-decent chess while partially concussed? So that's what we're doing, you know, very, um, very simple idea. Hopefully I don't blunder anything horrible and ruin the rating climb series, but at least we have a main line of the Vienna Gambit. So I don't have to think too hard about this. I have a bunch of videos in the Vienna Gambit, so this is nothing new really. I think my opponent's going to play the queen trade line. Uh, I'm trying to see. Should I take with the D-pawn? I probably should. Mm. Yeah, I probably should, because he's going to play the queen trade line. And if he doesn't, then I will be very sad that I didn't take with the B-pawn. Because then I like to build a massive center with pawns on C3, D4, and E5. But the problem is, when the queen trade line is played, which is queen to H4 check g3 and then the queen comes to e4 with check forcing a trade of queens and the problem is that after you take and take this pawn stops d4 from being played and our opponent probably knows this little detail which is why he hasn't allowed me to do what i want but on the other hand we can now play bishop f4 and castle queenside to put pressure on d5 so it's give and take Bishop b5 is certainly a move with check, but I also think we can play that at any time. There's no point rushing it. So let's castle. Let's threaten to win the d5 pawn. Bishop e6. And okay. Can we put more pressure on? We can play c4. But then d4. And we can play c3. But black has loads of defenders on the pawn if we do that. So it's not ideal. Not ideal. So I don't know whether we can put any more pressure on very easily. We could go for knight h3 to g5 to threaten this bishop. And put pressure on f7. It's not a bad idea. There is also this move bishop c4. That I've just noticed. Because bishop c4 attacks d5, but d4. So my, my initial idea was playing pawn c4, but then d4, and I couldn't find a way to put enough pressure on. But if we go, oh my god, if we go bishop c4, I, I would draw the arrow, but it's gonna do it in like three separate parts and it's gonna look stupid. But bishop c4, right? He can't take because the queen hangs. He has no checks with the queen. And we're attacking the pawn three times compared to his two defenders. If he pushes it, we can trade bishops. And his pawn structure does not look healthy. And this pawn's under a lot of fire as well. I don't see a reason not to play that. Queen a5 looking at a2 also doesn't work, so we just take, take, queen takes, queen defends a2. And... Wait. Take, take, queen defends a2, rook d8. Can't take it because the knight defends d8. Queen goes back to b3, rook d1, king d1. Although our king looks unsafe, I think that's okay. Because we're going to play knight f3 and bring our king back over. So bishop c4 looks very nice. 
we might force black to play come on come on to play knight back to e7 to defend which would be lovely then we can maybe give the check on b5 even let's do it i think this works i think queen a5 might be the best try though because like i said queen a5 bishop takes d5 bishop takes d5 queen takes d5 defending a2 rook d8 queen i was thinking queen b3 but actually queen c4 looks better i think i prefer queen c4 this knight doesn't have a way to attack the queen e5 is playable though if i go queen c4 and then queen b3 c4 and my queen is then trapped so that is not good no queen b3 is better in that because of that variation but that's if our opponent finds that that is not a given but that's just the line i needed to check that i liked in order for me to make this variation work now the most obvious not obvious but the most logical move for black to play i believe will be knight to e7 to defend the pawn but not only does that block the development of his dark square bishop it also doesn't address the problem of the pawn being pinned we can also play bishop b5 check but maybe he can just bring the knight back and we do win a tempo because it's exactly the same position as this except we have a bishop on b5 and it's our move but yeah so this is the line i expected but i think bishop takes d5 bishop takes d5 queen takes d5 rook d8 queen b3 rook d1 king d1 the king looks a bit stranded but i don't see a way for black to exploit it this knight can't get in anywhere because we control all of its entry squares so we can just slide the king back i don't see a problem with this again our king is going to end up on d1 but i trust that we're good queen c4 i think c4 sorry queen c4 i think b5 refutes it i'm just checking there's nothing better i don't think we've missed anything again we can't take the rook because the knight defends the rook so bear that in mind queen b3 yep let's do it and again it looks dangerous he is threatening c4 now to trap the queen so we do have to address this problem we could just play queen back to d5 though we still defend a2 and the knight's under attack where's the knight going maybe he has to play queen a6 that looks really good and then maybe we can go for moves like e6 to try and tear his king side apart his queen looks a bit offside there <laughs> maybe this concussion is helping me man <laughs> I t honestly although my head's doing like some somersaults every now and again <laughs> i i don't think it's affecting the play too much in all honesty i i don't know if any of you guys have like tried playing chess drunk before but i always find when i play chess drunk i mean i don't drink anymore but when i used to drink um i would find really interesting concepts whenever i did and yeah our opponent has nothing better but to trade queens and he is forcing a trade of queens because our queen is pinned to our king so we can't take the knight so we're up a pawn granted it's an isolated pawn in the center but a pawn's a pawn right let's not complain also again his knight has no easy entry into the position e5 is very well defended it's very difficult for his bishop to help attack h6 stops knight g5 
is he threatening g5 himself? Like g5, bishop back g4. But then the knight can hop into h4 to come into f5. So he could try and bait that out from our opponent. I'd like to play king e2, rook d1. Let's do it. A lot of the time when h6 is played, your immediate reaction is to play h4 to stop g5, which was my initial reaction because I was a bit scared of g5, bishop back, g4, dislodging the knight from the defense of the e5, from the e5 pawn. But then I can maneuver like this, and I think it's probably better for me. Again, in this scenario, I think the same thing happens, but... But, 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 I think a better way to go about this position is a rook d1 and rook d5 just pressuring the c5 pawn but he can play rook d8 there which is my issue that's my issue hmm <clears throat> i could play a4 because if b takes a4 rook a1 and i'm winning the pawn and his structure's ruined but if i go a4 a6, I take, and I claim the open A file. I think that's good for us. But A4, B4, if I take, then knight takes. Wait, A4, B4, C takes B4. If C takes B4, then... I have the d4 square to utilize. And if knight takes, then c3? Kick the knight back out of the position. And then his pawn structure split. Are you following? Hopefully. I think I like that. We are up a pawn. But it's not easy because our extra pawn, I mean, you could say our extra pawn is either our C pawn, which is doubled, or it's our E pawn, which is isolated. And it's it's not a passed pawn because the F pawn stops its progress. So it's not simple. Yeah, so he opts to do this, which I think is probably the best option. We don't actually have to take. We don't need to do anything here. But if we do take, is it beneficial? I don't know. Because if we take, take rook a1, king b7, and there's no entry point, we could do this and just try and get our king even further up the board. But I don't know. I think I want the e4 square for my knight to just try and like, oh my god try and rotate like this not not with those diagonals like this and get into e4 to try and utilize these squares i think that makes a lot of sense just calculating i think i should take first though I just want to take first. Don't ask me why. Don't ask questions. Again, rook d5, rook d8. And I don't see what I'm doing with the rook. Rook a1, king b7, I don't see what I'm doing with the rook. g5 again is not scary, I just drop the bishop back, and if he goes g4 I want to move the knight anyway, so I'm not bothered. What we could do actually, what we could do, see my issue with knight d2 to e4 is if knight d2, b4, and I can't let him take me because then I have doubled isolated pawns. 
So I need to take him to undouble the pawns. But then if knight takes, he attacks c2. If c3, he has the d5 square because my rook no longer attacks it because my knight is in the way, which attacks my bishop. But maybe just bishop g3. The white can't, sorry, the knight can't do anything. But then bishop g5 actually threatens an infiltration on e3. But that gives up the d6 square and the c5 square. So knight e4 will be attacking both of these squares. That was a long-winded calculation. So I think that solves knight d2, b4. Knight d2, rook d8. So knight comes to d2, this rook comes to d8. If I go knight e4, he's going to trade the rooks, which I don't like. But I can play rook f1 to go after the f7 pawn. We always like him playing f6 because we want to trade our e-pawn off because it's weak and isolated. And once we bring our knight in, this bishop can drop back to g3 to open our rook up. The rook can always swing over to the a-file if we need as well. So I like this idea. Again, g5, bishop, g3. The bishop wants to go to g3 anyway. If we can trade the e-pawn e off or somehow relieve the pressure on it, this bishop can always transfer to this diagonal and target this pawn. But I have a feeling that d6 and c5 are very important squares. So that's why I want my knight on e4. And again, if we can bait out a move like f5 to take en passant and trade off our weak e-pawn, I'm a happy man. That's a move I didn't consider. In all honesty. Is that scary? Knight e4. Bishop f8. Knight e4, bishop f8. Rook d5. If we can give up this pawn for this pawn, then we have a three on one advantage on the queen side. I think that's the principled approach. I think that's the principled approach. If he goes fancy with bishop f6, then knight d6 just wins the rook. But even if knight d6 winning the rook wasn't a move, we could always take with the pawn, rook takes e4, king f3 attacking the rook, force the rook to move and then take g7. So tactics seem to work out in our favour, because I think our pieces are incredibly active, and this pawn is doing a fantastic job at keeping this knight at bay. Maybe he might try some knight a5, knight c4 manoeuvre at some point, but if this knight ever moves, then a lot of pressure on e4 is alleviated. He might be trying to play on the fact that the rook and the king are lined up, of course, there's currently three pieces between them, but they can clear out very, very quickly. But like I was saying, if using those moves... So he's going to have to take a couple moves to get the pieces out of the way and put pressure on e5, right? But during those moves, if I can put enough pressure on c5, I'm, like I said, more than happy to trade my e-pawn for the c-pawn. Because if the c-pawn falls, probably the b-pawn falls. Even if the b-pawn manages to trade itself off for one of my queenside pawns, we're going to be in a 2-0 to zero majority on the queen side and 3-2 to two on the king side. My king is incredibly close to the king side, so 3-2 is not scary at all. They're also incredibly far back. 2 versus 0, however, I would be very happy with. So that's what I'm thinking. And I know his king is over there, but I think it might be more vulnerable than anything else because moves like knight d6 are scary. And my bishop sitting on like this diagonal, 
this diagonal, it could be a problem. So yeah, bishop f8 as expected. Knight d6 check doesn't work because bishop takes, rook takes, and then knight takes on e5. We don't gain anything. So I think rook d5. And rook d5 attacks c5 and attacks e5. And I've been looking at rook d5 for a long time, right? But a few conditions have changed. Firstly, this rook has come to e8 rather than going to d8. And my knight is now on e4, which helps the rook in attacking the d6 and c5 squares, right? A few condition changes. So now I believe it's the time to get the rook in. And f6 is played, which is as expected. I can't take because the knight hangs. So my plan was knight takes c5. Like I said, trading off the c pawn for the e pawn. That looks really good. Really good. I don't think I'm missing anything. And yeah, this looks kind of winning. Now, don't get me wrong, it's going to take a lot of conversion, but I don't see, I don't see black having enough compensation here. And our opponent is very high rated, like he's a good player. But I think <clears throat> B5 is going to become incredibly weak. And the only way to save it might be to try and push B4 to trade it off. But again, that creates a 2 to 0 majority for me. I could also maybe even ignore it with a move like c4 and try and win it by force and then have a 3 to 0. But that seems potentially just unnecessarily greedy. Also, bear in mind, if he takes our knight, he's trading off his bishop for a knight. And if we end up in like a rook and bishop to me versus a rook and knight for him, the bishop might be better than the knight because there's pawns on both sides of the board. Typically, bishops are better when there's pawns on both sides of the board in an endgame. And knights are better when there's pawns on one side of the board because the bishop can zip from one side to another quickly, whereas the knight stumbles over itself a bit more trying to do that. So that could also favor us. But also, if we get the opportunity to trade off all the minor pieces and be a pawn up with three versus one and two versus three then i might take that as well because i feel like even though it's a rook end game only one pawn up that could still be winning and interestingly i did i did briefly look at this move 97 attacking the rook but i didn't think it was that good maybe it is though because if say i play rook d1 so I move the rook back to d1. Knight g6 attacks my bishop, attacks my pawn, and this bishop is now opened up on the knight, and my rook is no longer defending it. That's an interesting move. I have no way to check the enemy king. Of course, that's my first thing that I'm checking for. No pun intended. Rook d4 might be good. But then, to defend the bishop, but then taking on e5 will always come with a fork. But then moves like rook e4 and takes and then the rook hangs behind it. Let's check this line. Rook d4, knight g6, knight d3, getting the knight out of danger, defending the pawn and the bishop. Pawn takes e5, rook e4. Can't take the bishop because the rook hangs. If knight... If knight takes f4, knight takes f4. Pawn can't take because the rook hangs. That looks good. That looks good. So my, my calculation is this. 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 Wait, sorry, no. This, this, this. And then 
after trades, I think as long as my rook ends up on e4, when this is played, then we pin and we're good. My only concern... This, this... This is a bit of a problem. Okay, 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 okay. What if, what if, what if, what if? Rook. Rook d3. Knight g3 attacking the bishop. No. No, no, rook d1. Rook d1. Knight g3 attacking the bishop. Then knight d3, getting the knight out of danger, defending the bishop. He's going to win the pawn back. But that should be it. And our rook is now safe. I think that's the move. That's a very tricky line from our opponent. Because his point is that everything in my position is hanging. But I think this just about resolves problems. If he takes with the pawn like this at any point, I should be happy. Because... This pawn is a non-threat, my king is on the e-file defending, it's isolated, it's weak, and I have a free on one on the queen side. I'm going to have to play a little bit faster. Um, sorry, my head's doing the occasional spin, <laughs> as I prefaced, but I think this should be good. Again, the critical line is knight g6, attacking my pawn, my bishop, and my knight all in one go. Bishop e3 is a move, but I don't like bishop takes c5, bishop takes c5, knight e5. Keeping the e-file open. I don't want the e-file to be open, because then my king is under attack. So, knight g6, knight d3... If knight takes e5, then knight takes e5, pawn takes e5, bishop e3, we should be winning. If knight if knight g6, knight g3, knight f4, knight f4, rook e5, keeping the file open with check, then king f3, keep sticking on a light square, should be very safe. And I think we can then begin to put pressure on the queen side with our knight and rook. Especially since this pawn is situated on a light square, so this bishop will struggle to help. Okay, I think I like that line. And calculation is so important because of these these situations where you can't just rely on like chess instincts and principles, you know? You, you just have to do raw calculation and just make sure that all the lines go in your favor, you know? So, yeah, I think we should be okay. I think we should be good. Again, knight g3, knight d3. Everything should hold together. Yes, we're going to lose the pawn. I already knew we were going to lose the pawn. Like, that's not a problem. I, I knew we were losing the pawn. This might be a better version of it for black because he may be able to keep the file open which i believe favors him keeps his pawns together and makes my king a bit more vulnerable because if the f pawn takes on e5 at any point the file closes it's hard to attack my king and my king blockades the pawn and then the e pawn is weaker because it's isolated right so keeping it on the f file is probably for the best for black so Still waiting on his move. I feel like he could have used more time earlier in the game, but I am down to two and a half minutes, which isn't ideal because the game is not simple yet. Give it five, maybe ten moves, the game might become a bit more simple, and I won't need much time every move, and I should be able to live off of my ten second increment. What? I did not consider this move. Knight f5. That doesn't threaten anything. I control all of his ways in. Now my knight's under attack, right? Maybe he's trying to control e3 so my bishop can't drop back there. 
Okay. Now, what should we consider? Knight d7. There. Don't like that. Like here? Maybe his plan is g5. To kick the bishop and win this pawn with the rook. Knight d3. Defends everything. G5. Bishop e3. Maybe his plan's bishop d6. I kind of like knight e4 though. Because knight e4, g5, knight takes f6 comes with an attack on the rook. Then our knight kind of gets stranded, though. This is tricky. Tricky, tricky. Okay, knight d3. I think knight d3 is the move. I it, it, It's fine if I lose this pawn. I don't need to hold on to this pawn. I'm fine with losing it. I'm trying to hold on to it, but there's no need. Sure, it might be better. Sure, there might be a way to do it. Maybe knight e4 is better. But for the sake of time and simplicity, I think this is the practical option. Yeah, g5. Let's go bishop e3. I'm expecting him to take. And my idea is, after takes, bishop d6, I go king... No, king e5 doesn't work. Because bishop takes, knight takes, rook takes. But then king's but then king f3. Okay, he just takes. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Let's let's play bishop f2 to try and dominate this knight and go g4 to kick it out. Yeah, so the e-file is now closed. The e-pawn is now isolated. Potentially weak. Potentially. Good move. Stopping me from going g4. But... I no longer want to. I no longer want to do that. Let's go rook f1. To try and kick the knight out with my rook. I think I might play bishop e1 to stop knight h4 because I'm just going to take it and ruin the structure. E pawn e4 isn't scary. If pawn e4, knight c5. And if bishop takes, bishop takes. That should help me. There's nowhere else really good for the knight to go. Anyway. If he goes to b4. And then probably bishop takes. Pawn takes. And then white, black gets more control over d4. Which I don't think I like. Because the c3 pawn is forced to move. <clears throat> I think we're slowly. Slowly converting this. I didn't like rook a1. Because of king b7. And then if... Oh, but rook a5, there is no king b6. It has to be king c6. Okay, well we missed that, but that's not the end of the world. Bishop c5. Knight h4. G t g3. Knight g6. I think we're invading on the, sec on the 7th rank. Initially, I wanted to put the bishop on e1 to stop this, but I think we can just go g3. And the knight has no... I mean, he can't really go to g2 because it's going to get trapped. So back to g6. And we cut off all entry points. e4, the knight goes to b4. 
and gets involved in the attack. This looks really good. This looks very good. I don't like the move bishop g7. I think the bishop belongs on the diagonal that I just took. I guess maybe his problem was he doesn't want the rook defending the pawn. He wants the rook in the game, but... Okay, that stops my rook from coming to f7. He's being resilient, to be fair to him. Let's get the knight involved. b5 is weak, so bear that in mind. Maybe he wants to do this. But then we just kick him out. There. There. We control everything. Whew, okay. Okay, 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 yeah. Kick you out. Go away. This might become weak though, this diagonal. Let's take the plunge. Let's just take the plunge. At least we attack the knight with the rook, so we can't just go bishop h6 without thinking. <clears throat> I'm kind of regretting putting the knight on b4 to be honest. I don't really see what it's doing. The bishop is also not doing a whole lot, but it also can't really be exploited, so... Okay, it's not the end of the world. And I think he's doing the right thing, because we have low time, and he's just playing tricky moves. Like that. But... Oh my god, I need to move quicker. It, thank god I've got 10 second increment. I think I might have just blundered this though. Hmm. Oh, that's not good. That's really not good. Our bishop is kind of trapped. Mm, rook f7. Bishop h6. Oh, okay, that's a lifeline. That is a massive lifeline. Now we attack the bishop, and our bishop has a way out via b4. Okay, 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 okay. Mm -hmm. Let's take. I did just allow knight takes. And then when my bishop retreats, knight d5... And then the knight can get into f4. Don't like it, but... What can you do? We'll work with it. We'll work with it. <clears throat> we can try and win g5 while he's off moving his knight around. <clears throat> Ooh. I want to go g3 to stop the knight from getting in to f4. And then I want to play rook f5 to attack this. And if he pushes, we push. And if he pushes, we probably take. Bishop a3, because I don't want this to come with an attack on the bishop. Do I mind if he takes? Probably not, but I don't want to give him the option. If knight d5, king e4, and knight back to f6, then we can bring the king in, and we're causing all kind of havoc. We also keep control of d6 so that a rook can't slide over. Hmm. Takes, takes. This is tough. Right there, 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 there. Takes, takes. Right there. Hmm. He 
He's doing a great job. He's doing a really good job. Okay. I think he's going to win H3. But I think we should be okay if I've calculated well. I've, I'm not really able to commentate quite as well at this point because, you know, we're really low on time. I don't have time to explain everything. But is what it is. Is what it is. I can cover a little bit of it in the game analysis anyway. Which will be shorter than usual because this game is going on forever. And <laughs> I don't want to keep you around for too long. Whoa. Whoa, that's unexpected. Wow. I need to move. Oh, that might be a terrible move. At least there's no obvious move for him. Because knight d5 can't be played now. And we stopped the king from coming into c4. Which was maybe a threat? Maybe? I want to set up something like this to attack e5 and win e5. That's my idea. Something like c4 check, pawn takes c4, rook e5 check. And get my bishop into the game. Also lining up with the knight, which could be useful. The knight has no good moves. Knight e4, there, 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 we win the knight. Bear that in mind. c4 all the same, knight d5 check, king e4, let's do it, this looks correct to me, oh my god, he, he hung the knight, he hung the knight, he hung the knight, what am I thinking, he hung the knight, he hung the knight, game over, let's go, come on, <laughs> I just fully missed that he hung the knight, <laughs> I saw it on the second time of asking though, so it's all good, oh my goodness, Hey, I just, I just beat him with a concussion. That's not bad. That's not bad. Let's get into the game analysis. All right, that was a game full of mistakes. We're both sat at around 75% accuracy. So I'm not going to take ages with this. I'm not going to talk massively about the opening because I have other videos. If you just check on my channel, like on my most popular videos, there's quite a few in the Vienna Gambit. So if you want to know more about the theory, then check those out. But I'll leave you to do that if you fancy. We're going to go through the opening a little bit. Here, I didn't want to play B takes because I didn't like this line. Because my D pawn becomes kind of annoying because it struggles to move, right? Without, um, without allowing this pawn to take on passant and get rid of black's weakness. So I went for D take C3. I'm going to play c5, bishop f4, knight c6, castle, bishop e6, and bishop c4. So the move is knight e7 to defend, but god is that an ugly move. <clears throat> that is really ugly. Apparently bishop g5, pinning the knight, and I should just be winning the pawn. There's way too much pressure. So queen a5 is a mistake. Takes, 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 rook d8. Wait, what? Queen c4 is better? But what about this? If queen b3, this traps my queen. So... Oh, then queen e4. Oh, wait, e4? Not d5, e4. Why? Oh, because then he can't trade the queens off. And I still maintain my attack on the knight. e6 is still a threat. Queen can't take this because game over. Ooh, and then queen d8 doesn't work. Because just king c1 and you still have the same problems. Queen c8 defending the knight. I just develop, bring a rook to d1. This is dominating. Okay, so queen b3 isn't quite as good. Because I can't access the e4 square from b3 okay that's interesting but queen d5 is the only move here to keep an advantage 
forcing a queen trade. Knight f3, h6. Again, here, um, I wasn't worried because g5 and the bishop drops back. You can always throw rook d1 check in if you want. g4, my knight comes to h4 and gets into f5, which is going to be incredible. So, yeah, I wasn't worried. Again, you can always throw rook d1 check in. Bishop e7, rook d1 check, king moves, and I do have an advantage. Not sizable, but an advantage. A4 is fine. My point was if b takes a4 and rook a1, I win this and I split his structure. And if he pushes, then I can take. If pawn takes, then I get the d4 square. <clears throat> and if knight takes, again, he splits his structure. I play c3, knight c6, and it's the same position, except I traded off my c2 pawn for the b5 pawn, which I think is a good trade. So, he doesn't. He doesn't allow that. He goes a6, takes, takes. Knight d2 isn't the best h4 is apparently better i guess to go like h4 h5 and clamp down on his king side okay knight d2 rook e8 knight e4 bishop f8 and rook d5 is the move so i do play this well f6 knight c5 and knight e7 is good oh i just oh well let me just get back to the position so, initially here, I was only really thinking about something like this. And like king c7. No, not c7, because it keeps it pinned. Maybe. Oh, but then b5 just hangs. So, yeah, he can't really do that. Um, Maybe he can do something like this. But then I just drop my bishop back to like e3 or g3. And I'm good. So, knight e7 is a great move. And, yeah, I did look at rook d4, but that fails. I did, rook d6 is apparently the best. And if knight g6, rook c6 check, the king can't advance here or here to attack the rook because the knight controls those squares. King can't go to b8. Why? Is it bishop g3? Knight takes e5. Rook e6. I don't know why this is so winning, but apparently it is. Rook d1. Okay, it says it's now the best move. I thought this was the best move, because my point was, knight g6, knight d3, only real move to hang on. And then, if he takes, then bishop e3. And if takes... Then knight f4. Of course you can take the e-pawn with the pawn, but that only helps me. And if rook e5, then king f3. My king is incredibly safe. This majority is not scary. This majority is scary. My rook controls the d-file. Black has no infiltration squares along the e-file. I'm very happy. So knight f5 caught me off guard. And knight d3 is apparently a mistake. The computer does like knight e4, and I said this in the game, I wouldn't be surprised if the computer likes this, but it didn't seem like a human way to play. Although, at least with low time anyway, at least after f takes, bishop e3, if takes takes, my knight is an absolute monster. And if like king c7, rook a, rook a1? King d7, bishop f, well I can actually just play this, and then like, g4, okay, <clears throat> so maybe knight e4 was better, the thing is, this just looked incredibly complicated, I didn't like g5 here, this was my issue, I did see knight f6, but rook e3 I wasn't sure what I should do, my problem was, when I move the bishop, bishop dies, pawn takes, rook e5, king moves to like, f3 is losing because of the fork, like d2. And I thought my knight was getting kind of trapped. I suppose I might have the h5 square, like say rook f5. 
or g4 or e4. That was my problem with the line. Looking at it in like the future, I thought, oh, my li my knight might get trapped. Knight d3, whilst it isn't the best, which again I kind of assumed it wasn't the best. I thought it was the simplest. G5, bishop e3, and I forced the e-file shut. The only way that the e-file, well, the e-file can't really stay um, open actually. I did consider here, here, and here trying to keep the e-file open <clears throat> because there's a pin. But if I just move and bishop takes, I, if knight takes, this might be a draw. Not a draw, but better for black than this position. I guess I have rook e1, yeah. King d7, and I can take here. If rook takes, rook takes, pawn takes, it's a winning king and pawn end game, I assume. Yeah. And if knight takes, pawn takes, this is an isolated pawn. I can probably just go king e4. No, apparently not. King and rook end games are tough. Rook a1 is apparently better. And then if rook f8, I assume king e3 to control f2. Okay. Okay, so that, I did briefly look at that line, right? But here, the file remains closed. Bishop f2, h5. Rook f1. Bishop g7. Bishop c5. Knight h6. Knight b4. Knight g4. Apparently I can just go ahead and infiltrate immediately. Here, here. Setting up some mating ideas with like here, 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 mate. That would have been nice. But <clears throat> low on time, I go h3, knight f6, king e3, knight e7. And here I should play rook f7. I did see that move. But yeah, bishop d6, I thought rook e6 trapped my rook and I was going to play rook f7. And say bishop h6. Then I can go to e7. This is dubious looking, but it holds for me. Something like g4, king e4, it's okay. So whilst I didn't perfectly calculate it, I fought rook f7 and yeah, maybe I'm okay. But bishop f6 is a weird move. Knight, f, knight d5, rook e6. Takes, takes, bishop c5. g3 is a mistake. So I should have just gone rook f5 immediately, but okay. Why is it a mistake? Because of rook c6. Rook a3. King e6. Oh, I guess the king gets into the center. But this is... I wouldn't even say this is drawn. The engine says it's drawn. I don't know about that. I don't know. Maybe my rook can infiltrate from behind or something. But king c6, drop the bishop back. h4, takes, takes. I did not like g4. I didn't like g4. I couldn't really put my finger on why. But I didn't like it. See, my problem was this, this. Knight f4 attacking h3, but I guess I just have rook f3. The computer's problem with it is e4. And I suppose this comes with check and then e3 gets played. And then knight comes to f4 and rook f3 isn't possible. e4 is a strange move though. Maybe he would have found it, but takes takes. And then I guess I have the f4 square at all times if he pushes e4. So, okay, I find it. Rook f5, king d5, that baffled me. I thought knight d5 was automatic. King e4, knight f6, I can't play king f5 now. So, if this, is there a better square to go to? No, so maybe I have to go to like f3. Maybe this was the way forward for black. But I don't have to cooperate with him. And like go into his perpetual. Anyhow, he doesn't do that. Rook f5, king d5, b3. 
is an inaccuracy, but I think it allows my bishop into the game via b2, which I was very happy with. King d6 is a blunder because he just blunders this. King e6 is a lot better because it attacks my rook and defends the knight. And I need to five rook g I need to find rook g5 to keep the advantage. And he needs to find rook c5 to defend e5 so that c4 doesn't come with such venom. But king d6 blunders a knight. I miss that the knight is hanging and goes c4. <laughs> take blunders because, again, I can just take the knight. But even if the knight wasn't hanging, like bishop e5 still wins the pawn, wins the knight. I'm all good. Uh, but yeah, I just win a piece and game over. That's not bad. On low time, I think I handled that end game well. I think I handled the opening incredibly well by calculating that bishop c4 line and just winning a pawn very cleanly. And my concussion will not stop me from getting ever closer to 2000 elo on the rapid rating climb. If you stuck around to the end of the video, much love. Appreciate you a whole lot. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.